Well, how in the world are you, Pastor Ed, again? Good to be with you. I'm going to speak from an epistle written by St. John, 1 John 1, the first three verses, and we titled our devotion today, The Grip of Grace, and of course that grip of grace is found only in the hands of God. There John writes, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we've seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest. We saw it and we testify to it. That's a powerful witness and testimony of John. John walked with Jesus. He sat at his feet, listened to his voice, and he declares Jesus not only a man, but also God in the flesh. Jesus is not just another rabbi or a teacher for John. He's the word of life. And we can ask why John's writing his letter, but he tells us, he says, so that his joy may be complete in us, when we hear God is light, in him is no darkness at all, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. For John, there is only one gospel. Jesus, who walked this earth and died to give us his grace, his mercy, and his life. And John offers multiple proofs of being in the presence of Jesus. Because Jesus is real for John, real in speech and sight and touch. And so it just doesn't get any more real than that. I don't know about you, but some of the most precious things that we never forget, we often hold in our hands. A special gift at a special time from a special person. Maybe you remember that. For sure, a newborn baby or a grandchild for me or a lost child just found. These precious times and persons are dear to us. And we bind them up in our memories. And they define, at the end of the day, what's really important. Personal relationships. And so God holds us in his hands because... We're precious to him. And so fellowship with God is seeing, hearing, touching, and proclaiming his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus is not the stuff of high school memories, of human emotions and failed commitments. Jesus is about sacrifice on the cross. And so fellowship, according to John, are real things, things we hear and see and touch in Jesus. What are those real things? What are those precious things? Well, they're his word. We hear it, we read it, see it. It's water, a baptism, bread and wine, where we hear, see, and we touch the real Jesus in Holy Communion who forgives our sin. The world is awful busy. It's look in a store, go out and look at the cars on the street. People are busy looking for help in all the wrong places. And so, hopefully your priorities is about worshiping at the altar of our Lord as your best effort and wisdom. When we live in pride, we think we can live and love without God. And pride promises lasting peace. How many men have you heard say that's what they're going to do? And all of the political, moral, and ethical solutions of men always fail, and not only once, repeatedly because they leave out Jesus and his good news. They leave out forgiveness. They leave out repentance. 
the good news that John saw lived and that John experienced was named Jesus of Nazareth. Now many say they're holding on to Jesus for dear life. I like that statement, but there's a problem with it. There's a time when we can no longer hold on. The times when disaster arrives or sickness proves our fallibility and our helplessness because of the disease of sin. Real trusting faith is not in my hands or decisions. Faith rests in the grip of God's grace. And His grip never lets go, especially when we're the weakest and the most overwhelmed. Where do we find this grip and this comfort of grace from Jesus? We hear it in His Word. We see it and feel it in the water of baptism. We see, touch, and taste it in Holy Communion. And we live it in the very presence and power of His Holy Spirit through His Word, through His sacraments, which deliver the power and the benefit of the cross. And we call that cross the tree of life. John speaks of a real Lord and Savior. The same Savior that he saw, he hugged, and he held. John was precious in the sight of Jesus, and it was precious in the hands of Jesus, and so are you, and so am I. Jesus held on to John in the words that John heard, in the water that he washed John's dirty feet, and in the body and the blood that John received in bread and wine. And Jesus holds those same hands out to each of us because we're precious in his sight and because his hands are battle-tested with the marks of the nails. And his hands are battle-tested that shed his blood for us and he will never, ever let us go. We need to be in the grip of grace in the hands of Jesus. Then we are strong. Then we have many, many tomorrows that will never end. So, till we see you again, pray for one another. Have a good week. God bless you, Pastor Ed. Adieu.